Hey Gear Seekers, I'm Nick. A little while ago we checked out the WD Blue SN550 and came to the conclusion that the value for money for that drive was actually pretty decent. And after that video, WD actually sent over one of their WD Black SN750s for us to check out as well. And I wanted to see what the differences were and see if the extra price of the SN750 is actually justified. And the reason why I'm doing all this is because that's exactly what you guys asked us to do. So we're gonna do it. sent over the one terabyte version of the SN750, but it does come in other capacities like 250 gig, 500 gig, and also two terabytes as well. But since we don't have any of those, we're only gonna be talking about the one terabyte version in this video. And they also sent over the version without a heatsink, but all the testing was done with the heatsink on and with the heatsink off on our test bench with the heatsink that comes on the motherboard. The WD Black SN750 M.2 SSD is WD's answer to them slowly phasing out their SATA M.2 SSD drives and creating some proper high performance drives. It's designed for people like PC enthusiasts, it's for gamers who want the fastest access times, for content creators, and also for buyers who want to get the maximum speed out of a PCIe Gen 3 configuration and interconnect. The one terabyte SN750 has random read write performance of around 515K to around 560K IOPS. The drive is also fully PCIe Gen 3 compatible and it should also work on your PCIe Gen 4 slots as well. And we did test this and it does work perfectly. It comes with a five year limited warranty and should give you around 1.75 million hours of use before any type of failure. It's around a measly 200 years. And as usual, we put this drive up against 12 of the other drives that we've got available at the moment and we did a crazy amount of testing. And the way we actually do this testing is we fill every drive up to 50% capacity. We run five different types of tests. We run those tests 20 times and we calculate the average speed of all of those 20 tests conducted. We run a one gigabyte test, a four gig test, a 16 gig test, a 32 gig test and a 64 gig test on all 12 drives to give all of the results a little bit of context. Now we only did thermal testing on the SN750 because that's the focus of the video. And to be honest, re rebuilding all of this data would just take a colossal amount of time if we had to retest all the drives thermally as well. So I'm, I'm only gonna show it's relevant. I'm gonna go back and retest all these thermally, but for now, yeah, I'm only testing the drive for this video. Now the drives that we tested are the only drives that we have on hand. And if I haven't tested something, then I just don't have one. So please don't ask why we didn't test a certain drive. I physically just don't have one. All right, strap yourself in. We're gonna take a look at about 40 or so graphs. So yeah, um, it's a lot of info to unpack. So sorry, in advance. There's a lot of variation between all the drives as they all come in at different price points for different use cases. And I think this is actually a pretty good sample of drives you might actually consider buying from the entry level all the way right up to the upper echelon of the high end. And there's also an array of things you need to consider when choosing an M.2 as well. And most of those things can be found with a quick Google search. Now, things like varying amounts of cash, also the physical controllers being used on every single drive can be different. We've also noticed that if you're using the same model drive, some will actually have a different revision of the same controller which can actually affect the performance of the drive. There's also other things like the capacity of the drive with most of the higher capacity drives usually performing a fair bit better. The other differences are there's uh, differences with the physical speed between PCIe Gen 3 and Gen 4. And as you're seeing in the graphs now, we have actually added the generation of PCIe Gen 4 being used for each drives to lower the confusion. There's also differences in the physical pool of drives as well. But like I said, I can only provide the information that I've got and all of the data that's available to me. Otherwise, I just can't give you that information. And as usual, with any type of video, with any type of benchmarks, take every single thing that you're seeing with a grain of salt because there's a lot of variables and some things just cannot be repeated. Again, I'm gonna repeat, take everything that you're seeing here with a grain of salt.
testing, it's pretty clear that the WD Black SN751 terabyte is up there with some of the fastest Gen 3 drives that we've ever tested. And that's kind of the point of it. It's supposed to be blisteringly fast. The next thing I was curious about was the WD Black SN750 and if you actually needed the heatsink, like the version that actually comes with the heatsink. So I tested it again and without the heatsink, the numbers were the same within a margin of error. And there's just nothing really interesting going on here. And as I always say with these videos, and this is a fact, flash storage has an optimal operating temperature and being cold isn't always the best thing for flash storage. So yeah, it's a little bit of a tidbit if you guys are interested. So what do I think of the WD Black SN750? Is it worth the money? I think with these drives, it's always pretty subjective. It always depends on your use case. If you need the speed and you're looking at drives in the same class, then I would say yes. Uh, if we compare it to the Seagate Fire Cuda 510, the SN751 terabyte in Australian dollars, because that's my local currency, uh, is around $30 cheaper than the, the Seagate Fire Cuda 510 and these SN750 is consistently faster across the board. But what does that even mean to like the regular user? It means you can save money and get a faster drive. But what about the SN550 and the 750? Again, and I'm gonna really reiterate this, the use case is subjective. If you're wanting fast storage for games, I think the SN550 is acceptable and it's pretty great value. And you can check out that video that we did up there if you wanna see what I said about that drive. But if you're wanting something considerably faster than the SN550, the 750 is also a good option, especially considering that it's cheaper than the Seagate drive with better performance. However, there's another drive that's hiding in there somewhere that might also be something to look at. And that's the Transcend 220S. Just keep your eye on this drive. The problem is it's, it, although it's like cheaper than both of the drives, like the, the Fire Cuda and the SN750, the availability is the biggest issue with the Transcend drive. So uh, I think the SN750 in terms of value, if you're looking at the high-end drives, so the stuff that's designed to be faster, I think it's pretty on point. And it's basically hitting the physical maximum throughput of the PCIe Gen 3 by 4 interconnect. Yeah, that's what I've got to say about that. So if you're interested in grabbing the one terabyte version of the SN750, the one that we showed in this video, it's going for around 175 US dollars or around 329 Australian dollars at the time of filming this video, yeah. Let me know what you think of this drive. Let me know if you're using one of these drives. Let me know your experiences with it. I've used it in a few builds already, so I kind of know how it works. I'm also curious to see what everyone else is using other than this drive. And I'm, I've been asking vendors to send us more and more drives so we can add to this database. And then when we get it to a certain level, we'll just share the database and you, there'll be filtering and stuff. So you can be like, hey, I want this type of drive, blah, blah, blah. And we'll show everything. I have been working on it like quite a bit because storage is kind of my thing. I'm actually really interested in it. And I just want to add this as well. And I can't believe I have to say this in a video. WD did not pay for this video. They literally just sent us a drive and they're like, do whatever you want. And I decided that I wanted to do a video with it. Simple as that. And we're also going to be checking out some SATA drives as well, because you guys have been asking us. We have the Samsung 870 Cuvo 2 terabyte. We're going to check that out next week sometime. Yeah, so we do have a bunch of other drives coming in that we are actually pretty interested in checking out, which we're going to do because you guys have been asking. And if you like this video, please uh, hit the like button. If you hated it, hit the dislike button twice. If you want to support the channel and get early access to videos like this one, you can either hit the join button or get early access over on Floatplane. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak. We seek. And yeah, like I have been requesting more drives because you guys have been asking us. So yeah, we're just waiting for more drives to come through. We will do more of these videos as they come through because I like doing them and I actually find them quite interesting because yeah, if you guys don't know, I've got a data center background and one of my specialties in the data center was storage. So yeah, that's kind of my thing. Thanks for watching.